Dansby Swanson cracks one to center field. That ball's well hit. Turner going back. It's over his head, and that's going to ricochet back toward the infield. Dansby's got two. He's on his way to third. They're going to wave him. Here comes the throw to the plate. Dansby Swanson is safe. It's an inside the park home run. His first big league homer and inside the park bomb in Washington. Can you believe that? Here's the 0-2. Swung on, there goes the deep left. It is high. On a balmy summer night in the Rocky Mountains, the show comes to you from Coors Field in downtown Denver. Tonight, the second of three to start the week between the New York Mets and the Colorado Rockies. It's Rockies baseball on the show, and it comes your way next. Chad Bettis, a right-hander from the state of Texas, is the man on the mound here. What do you have for us on him, H? Well, this has been a little bit of a mystery. I mean, he really struggles at home. You got the home crowd behind you. You got the mound you're used to pitching on an awful lot, but he hasn't been able to get it together. Maybe this is the game that turns it all around for him at his home ballpark. Here's the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. He's a long ball threat, of course, currently number four in the National League home run race. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. No offer on that one, two balls and a strike. Harold, as we take a look at the Rockies starting play here tonight, they've had a pretty rough go of it of late, and that's being kind. They come in losers of eight in a row. Yeah, Matt, I mean, it's been real ugly watching them play recently. They just haven't played good ball, and nobody wants to watch that. Somebody's got to step up, make a big play, make a big pitch, or even the manager making the right move. But something's got to change the, the mojo on this club to get them winning. Seared down the first baseline. And he'll take this to the bag himself. And there's your first out of the ball game. And now a chance to meet the Mets. HR, how do they lock up a series victory here on the road? Matt, this is a scary lineup. They've got power and they have speed. They score runs in all different ways. They hit the ball in the ballpark and they score on balls in the gap when you have a run at first base. That's what speed, power combination can do. This is a very tough lineup. Here now is his Drupal Cabrera. The average for him entering play sits down in the 250s. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. So let's take a look at our umpiring crew in this one. Behind the plate is Joe McDonald. Well, McDonald's strike zone is pretty ordinary, pretty basic. Now, sometimes it's tough to figure out, and that's when you get frustrated with him. There's not a whole lot of flash, but you just want him to be consistent, pick one side or the other. That's where guys get frustrated. On the first, and Cabrera is a ground out victim. Two away. Striding in, Michael Conforto, hitting a little over 250 coming into action in this one. Right down the shoot that time, one and two. Oh, that was a good looking slider to hit. It kind of hung in one. When you got a slider right there and it's spinning towards you, that's the one you, you annihilate. That misses. It's to two and two now with two away here in the top of the first. This is fouled back and out of play into the VIP seats behind home plate. Well, clearly that change up the pitch before didn't fool him because that fastball right there, he's right on it. He just couldn't put it in play. And he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. Here's the pitch. And now a pitch hit sharply on the ground. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again, three and two. Ready now with the payoff pitch. Now a sharply hit ball back up the middle. A diving try, but it's through into the outfield. Matt, did you see where they were playing him? They're playing him in the shift, and he just did not Got care. Before. If he hit the ball I'm hard, I guess that's 52. his philosophy. It was going to get through anyway, and we saw it right there. Base hit into the shift. Here's the left fielder, Ioannis Cespedes. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Curveball, but he can't get him to chase it one and two. Those 0-2 curveballs are really tough for guys to lay off. 
There's a reason it's such a common pitch in that count, but he did well to spit on it there. And this one gets away. And he'll make it into scoring position here with two away, as that'll be scored a wild pitch. Well, this inning was looking routine, and then with one base hit and a wild pitch later, things are looking a lot different. Now a base hit scores a run, got to reset on the mound and make some good pitches here. He's set. Here's the 2 2. Hit to short. Story scoops it up. Throw in time, and the side is retired. Mets leave one, and now the Rockies will go on offense for the first time. No score. Steven Matz is ready to go as he'll be on the mound for the Mets. What's your take on him, H? Well, Matt, he's a rare breed in today's game. He doesn't rely on the strikeout. He's averaging less than seven strikeouts per nine. So they're going to put the ball in play on him. He's a guy that's going to use his defense. It's almost like a throwback to yesteryear. So digging in now, D.J. LeMayhew. And you can see his home road splits there. He has not fared very well in front of the home crowd, oddly enough. Ready to deal. Here's the 1 1. Looks at a curveball called for a strike. That's a high strike on a curveball right there. If he continues to throw that pitch, we won't be mentioning his name very much longer in this game. He's going to have to get that ball down to be effective. And he will reach down to put this one away. Good job of hanging with it there for the first out. With that, here's a look at the Rockies lineup card for this one. How do they get back into the win column here, Harold? Well, Matt, they've really been struggling the last three or four games to score runs. They haven't been able to execute a bunt. They haven't been hitting run, and They haven't been doing the little things that maybe might jump them. And the biggest thing, the power has disappeared. So they've struggled the last three or four games. Coming to the plate now, David Dahl. It's been a rough go for him at the plate as he enters this one with a season average in the 230s. That tough sinker on the inside corner. One out, nobody on. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. After it is Granderson. And that's the second out of the inning. Batting third. Third base At the plate, Nolan, Nolan Arenado. Arenado. No one aboard for him. And two gone here in the first. Here's the one and one pitch. Grounded back up the middle. And that's through for a hit. So the two out hit extends the inning for Trevor Story. When you're struggling, you'll look for anything. Been off to a little bit of a cold streak. He didn't hit it hard, but that's a big one to build on. Trevor Story. And that brings in the power hitting shortstop Trevor Story. He enters this one second in the National League round trip category. Ready on one and two. Hit on the ground out to short. Played on the backhand. And from deep in the hole, he got him. What a play. And that ends the inning. Off of one leg in the hole, falling away. That is pure magic. We're back at Coors Field in just a moment. Here's Jay Bruce now. He comes in with 16 home runs on the season so far. The two and one on its way. There's a knee high pitch that catches the zone. I like how he's mixing up the fastball and the changeup right there. That's how we got the two and two count. I think he comes back with a changeup here. And this one's chopped foul right at home plate. Oh, he's looking pretty good right now. Look, that was a nice swing following the changeup. He just couldn't put it in play. Hard hit to first. And he'll take this to the bag himself, and the leadoff man set down to start the second. 
All right, here's how the Rocks line up defensively. Brought to you by Majestic. Neil and I'm looking down at second base at DJ LeMayhew. Talk about overlook. Now, this guy's won gold gloves, and people don't even know about it. He's got tremendous range, great hands, makes all the plays. Striding into the box, Neil Walker. He enters play with 14 home runs to his credit this year. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. Swing and a looper to left. Hara moving in. He makes the play. Really had to hustle to get to that one. Two gone now. Batting seven, third baseman, number five. Here's the third baseman, David, David Wright. Wright. And you can see great numbers over the past few games. Here's the one and one delivery right over the middle knee high. One and two here it comes. And that'll get down for a two out single. So a great job on a one and two pitch to keep the inning alive. That was terrific. You always hear keep your hands inside the baseball. That's a perfect Catholic. example. The ball was Travis in and he took Darnell. it back up the middle. You can't do that if you don't keep your hands inside the baseball. Stepping in now, Travis Darno. Nope, that's a ball. And a fastball just a bit up. 34 pitches for him through an inning and two thirds right now. That's not terrible, but it's a lot higher than he'd like. Swung on in the dirt, strike three, and that ends the inning. Met strand one. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. Into the box now, Ian Desmond looking for better results than last night when he went 0 for 4 in that one. Now a swing and a chopper foul right at home plate. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. Oh, and he's caught looking at a beautiful curveball there as that buckled him for the first out of the inning. All right, time for the majestic defensive alignment for the Mets. And I'm looking down there at the catcher, Travis Jarno. The thing about Travis, not a big guy, and he's had some injuries along the way. But if he can stay healthy, he's got a great pitching staff to catch. Here's cargo Carlos Gonzalez lifetime numbers against Steven Matz one for three bottom of the second here with no score strike two called and it's even at two into the windup here comes the two two pitch and he'll stay alive here but just barely as this ball's chopped foul at the plate and the count holds it two and two. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Cespedes is in his tracks now as he makes the catch for out number two. Stepping into the box, Dustin Garno. And a quick glance at the numbers will tell you it's been a huge struggle for him at the plate this year. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right, and that'll move the count to one and two now. This is line to left, and that's in there. So perhaps some life here with two men out. So that keeps the bottom of the second going. In eight. is Gerardo Parra. Left. He Taylor. went hitless last Over night in a home. game where his guys could push across only one score. Two out with a man at first. In the dirt here. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to one and two. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Hit out towards second. Throw on to first. Gets him and the side is retired. Rocky strand one will move to the third with no score. So striding forward now. Steven Matz. Nine one and two do up.
from the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Boy, good oh, bite on the slider, and it just missed inside. Takes a look at a fastball down the middle for strike number two. Even at two balls and two strikes, here's the pitch. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Gonzalez has a read on it. One down. How about him? So with one gone, a reminder that New York Mets baseball continues all season long here on MLB The Show as you take a look there at where the three of us will be in the week ahead. In is Curtis Granderson. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Third inning, no score to this point. Looking at a tough pitch called a strike. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. Swinging a ball hit on the ground. Lays off two and two now. Two balls, two strikes. A swing and this ball is blasted to right field. Nothing's going to keep this one in the ballpark. Into the second deck and gone. A solo home run for Curtis Granderson. Number 25 for him on the year. And the Mets are on the board first, one to nothing. one of those pitches you wish you could take back as soon as it leaves your hand but guess what there are no delete or rewind buttons in baseball that's a mistake and it was a good job by his opponent to make him pay for it into the box now as dribble Cabrera oh, and he took something off of it there it's one and two Pretty lucky to get away with that one. There's not a situation ever where you want to throw a high changeup, so I think he'll try to make an adjustment with the next one he throws. Weakly hit towards first. And he'll step on first himself for the out. The right fielder, number 30. Ready for another Michael. chance? Michael Conforto. He reached on a single in his first try. Into the windup, here's the 2 and one pitch. Takes a look down at the knees for a strike. Bases are empty here with two men out. Look out. Don't want to hit him there. It's full three and two. And now a pitch on the way. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. Dahl going back at the track. But he has no chance to make the play. It's off the wall. But he won't have a play. This is down and into the gap. Well, he was definitely struggling coming into this one. But I think we could say that cold streak is officially over. That's his second hit of the game. And it goes for extra bases. We'll see now if this game proves to be a huge turning point for him. In now, Joanna Cespedes. And that misses ball four. So it's first and second now with two out. And I'm pretty sure he thought that was a strike. He's thinking, what do I have to do? Put a bow on it? Walk it down and put it in the catcher's glove by myself? I think it got called a little outside, so he has to put it behind him now. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Jay Bruce. Two on, two out for him here in the third. He's set. Here's the three and two. Here's a high foul ball as it finds a lucky fan in the upper deck for a souvenir. Good lead there at second. Here's the pitch. Now a ball rolls softly to second. They'll whip this one to first in time, and that ends the inning. Mets draw first blood thanks to this solo home run. Bottom of the third coming up. It's one nothing Mets.
So coming to the plate, Chad Bettis. He'll lead it off against Steven Matz. Here's the one and one delivery. A sinker over the outside corner for strike two. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Dribbled up the line. That winds up foul. Oh, he might have got away with one. Two strike breaking ball that ended up being in the zone. I think he probably won that out of the zone, but fortunately, he just fouled it off. Swing and a miss there as the breaking ball takes care of him for the first out. Well, it's still early, but it's also worth noting that he'd be in line for the win if this keeps up as we take a look at the league leaders in games won this season. And as you see, he's right up there among league leaders in that department. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMayhew. 0 for 1 here in the early going. From the windup, the 1-1 pitch. And he'll whip this one over to first, and he gets his man for the second out. Now batting. Digging in to try it again. David Dahl. He flew out in his last at bat. Two out, nobody on. Now a ball sliced out of play down the left field line. The next 3 2. Again, he sends it out of play. Ready to deliver the full count pitch. On the ground to third. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. Three up, three down for Colorado. They're down one nothing. Here's Neil Walker. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. And he takes strike three cold on the fastball, one gone. So after getting the strikeout on the fastball, not a bad time to check out our pitch speed comparison for our two starters. Both guys topping out at 95 miles an hour. Digging in for his second at bat, David Wright. One for one after a single his first time up. Ready to deal. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Called yeah. strike on the inside, and he can't believe it at the plate. It's 1-2 and two now. Pitch swung on and hit in the air. Gonzalez has a read on it. Two down. Now batting. Catcher. Here's the catcher, Travis, Travis Darno. Comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. One run, four hits. And no errors on the Mets line score so far. Now a curveball's in there. One and two now. Love that pitch right there. And he executed it perfectly. A big arcing curveball that starts at the batter's hip and then just bends onto the inside corner. A lot of hitters have a tendency to open up way too early, and they can't make good contact on that pitch. Slow roller back to the mound. Throw to first will get him easily, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Mets, but they're up one to nothing. Here's Nolan Arenado, a base hit in his first trip. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a ball lifted in the air into fairly deep center field. And there to take it in is Granderson for the first out of the inning. And that brings in the power hitting shortstop Trevor Story. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. A 1 and 1 count. Here's the pitch. Tries to change up on him there, but it's a ball. 2 and 1. Into the windup. Here's the 2 and 1 pitch. Squared that one up just a little late. He's ready with the 2 2 pitch. And this is down at knee level as it's chopped foul at home plate. All even at two and two. Here it is. That ball's headed for the gap in left center. He's got a base hit, possibly more. He'll get it into second. 
And he's able to hustle his way up to second as he'll reach here with a two base hit. So stepping in, Ian Desmond, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Oh, and they pull the string on a good change up there as he swings and misses, and he's set down on strikes for the second time tonight. Well, it's been a rough series for him at the plate so far. That's four strikeouts in the first two games, so this pitching staff clearly has him figured out. Standing in now, Carlos Gonzalez as he hits one on a line to left field. And that's in there. Base hit. Throw into second. The runner scores from second. Well, Matt, they didn't score much yesterday. You know, the conversation before the game was, was the offense going to be able to do anything today? Right there, that one run might be enough to kind of propel them into a good stretch now. Stepping in now, Dustin Garno as he sends it on the ground to first. And a reach, but it's by him as he couldn't quite get to that ball. I always believe the best hitters are the ones that can stay on the ball and use the whole field. Right there is a perfect example. Ball away, he stays with it and shoots it the opposite direction. Into the box now, Gerardo Parra as he loops under the ball and pops it up. One run, five hits. No errors in the ballgame for the Rockies thus far. And a big strike out there as they'll leave a couple of runners on base. And after a good start to the inning, they can't capitalize any further. Rockies forced to settle for one. We played four full, all tied at one and one. Chris Russell is going to take over now here in inning number Rockies. five. So it'll be a bullpen game from here on out. Chris Russell. Riding in once again, Steven Matz. He's 0 for 1 thus far. A 1 and 1 count. Here's the pitch. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Scorey picks it up. And the throw here is in time. Very nicely done there at short for the first down. Digging in and looking for more, Curtis Granderson. Comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. Now a right-hander has started to get loose in the Colorado bullpen. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's two and one. Bases are empty. One man out. And Granderson trying to work his way aboard. He's got it to three and one now. That's in there, and it'll run the count to full three and two. A take there by Granderson as that pitch misses. It's ball four. Well, he gives up the walk, but that was a really good pitch. Might have been just out of the zone, but not by much. A lot of guys would have gone fishing for that pitch, so sometimes the hitter just outlasts you. Smoked on the ground left side and that's through for his first base hit in this one. Got the ground ball he's looking for right there. Hard grounder but it just wasn't at somebody. If it's at somebody it's a double play ball. Now he's got to get back to work and maybe get another one. In now, Michael Conforto. And he'll promptly send it in the air out to center field. Long run, but he tracks this one down out there for the second out. Nice play. The left fielder, number 50. Here's the left fielder, Yoenis Cespedes. And we'll see what he can do here with a pair of runners on base and two gone here in the fifth. Hits are even right now at five aside. Line drive to left. That's in there. Base hit. Granderson rounds third and is digging for the plate. And they will tag him out at the plate. And that'll keep our ball game tied up as the inning is over. Two left for the Mets. Halfway home, all even at one apiece. Steven Cardulo will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. 
Number 65, Steven Cardulo. And a half-hearted attempt that time as you broke the plane of the plate. It's a ball and two strikes now. Cabrera there for this one. It's short. Reined in. And a flip to first from Cabrera in time for the first out. The batter number nine. Second Here's the second baseman, DJ LeMayhew. He comes in 0 for 2 thus far. Popped up. And Bruce has got this one two away now. Now batting. And that will bring up the speedy outfielder David Dahl. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. Ready to deliver the full count pitch. Good job to spoil that one away and he stays alive. The payoff pitch one more time. Now a ball hit in the air but in play perhaps down the line. Cespedes is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Rockies. We played five full, tied at one aside. Carlos Estevez takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Number 54, Carlos Estevez. Ready for another shot now. Jay Bruce, third trip to the plate for him here tonight. 0 for 2 at this point. Here comes the nothing and two pitch. Fouled straight back. I like the pitch right there. Two strike fastball out of the zone. See if he'll chase. I'd go even further out this time. See if he chases it again. And another foul ball. Here comes another 0 2. And oh, he can't get out of the way of that one. So the leadoff man will be on to open the frame. Hey, anytime you're battling and the score is even, you've got Second to get on base, base to manufacture Neil some offense. Walker. He'll take that every day of the week. Here's Neil Walker, 0 for 2 on his line thus far. Action now in that Colorado pen as a southpaw has stood up to throw out there. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. Looks at a changeup that catches the corner. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. A, a fastball that just misses inside. Leadoff man aboard here in a 1 1 ball game. Oh, and look out as this runs in and gets him. The second man he's plunked in this one. <laughs> Hitting guys back to back? Umpires don't have much patience for that kind of thing, whether it's intentional or not, and neither does the team that's getting plunked. Stepping in and ready for another shot, David Wright. And I'm not sure how comfortable he may be up there, seeing as though the first two men were hit by a pitch this inning. Got him. Fooled on the pitch as he swings at it in the dirt for strike three. Good job to corral this quickly as the runners hold on. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. Into the box, Travis Darno taken the other way, but this should be routine out there in right field. Gonzalez is right there as he takes it for the second out. Riding in once again, Steven Matz. We'll see if he can come through in a clutch spot here. Two on, two out here in inning number six. Hoping to keep it tied. Here it comes. Mm, can't do much with that one. It's one and two. I love the competitiveness. He gives up two straight singles, and then he gets two outs. He's got a chance to get out of this inning without giving up anything. Right back to him, and it's off his shoe. 
Great support from his infield, though, as that's the third out. Weird way to end the inning. Two left for the Mets. Still tied one apiece. Ready for another chance? Nolan Arenado. He's one for two in the ball game. He's ready. Now the payoff pitch. It's a swinging bunt up the line. That rolls foul, so a good job to fight it off and stay alive. The 3 2 one more time. Hit hard on the ground to third. Gloved by right. Throw on to first, and one third baseman grounds out to the other, one away. Now batting. Digging in to try it again. Trevor Story. He doubled earlier in the game, one for two to this point. On its way is pitch number 75. Zero. Now a swing and a miss at the hard sinker, and they're back to even two and two. He's been doing a nice job out there on the mound, but the deeper you get into the game, the more the hitters have seen you. This is the part of the lineup that he has to be really careful with. In time to first, and there are two away. Now batting. First Digging in once again, Ian. Ian Desmond. And he's likely just trying to put one in play here. 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts thus far. Bases are empty here with two men out. And it's to two and two now with the bases empty and two gone here in the inning. And good patience to hold back on the curveball in the dirt. It's full now three and two. Now a flare out toward right center. Here comes Granderson. He tracks it down, and that will end the inning. Three up, three down for Colorado. Score remains tied one to one. Welcome back to Coors Field here in Denver. All square at one as we get set to start the seventh. But before we do, let's take a look at the game summary to this point. Your Jake McGee please. is on to pitch now from the bullpen the now Rockies. to start inning number seven. Number 51, Jake McGee. Here's the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. He comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. Set. Here's the 3 1. And he lays off. Ball four. Now the potential go ahead run is on base here. Yeah, that strategy is great when it works, but when it doesn't, it's ugly. And he was here to face one guy, and he couldn't get it done. Ready once again as Dribble Cabrera, leadoff man on base, and we'll see what they have in mind strategy wise here. Here comes the 3 1 pitch. Hit in the air out to straightaway left field. Para has him played perfectly as he puts it away for round number one. Now at the plate, Michael Conforto. His individual history against Jake McGee. Not a big sample size, 0 for 1. He's set and the 2 1 pitch. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's behind three and one. Time to focus here. This game is way too close to be walking, guys, so we'll see if he can make him swing the bat on this next pitch. Donnie bailed him out with a swing three and two now. In a double play situation, that's the location you want a guy to swing at. More than likely, he's going to beat it into the ground. And a fastball blew it right by him, and there are two down. Well, that's just a quality pitch right there. The location was excellent because if it's put in play, there's a good chance it's on the ground for a double play. And hey, a strikeout always works too. Standing in now, Joanna Cespedes. Breaking ball. That's in the dirt as he takes a ball. Two out with the possible go-ahead run at first. In there, and it's even now, two and two. Yeah, I think that's the idea, Matt, but he might spin the win if he starts looking for it in there. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Pulled high in the air out to left field. 
Farah has it in his tracks. And that retires the side. Mets leave one. Score remains deadlocked at one. Digging in and looking for more, Carlos Gonzalez. A hit in two tries so far. From the windup, the 1 1 pitch. This ball sliced the opposite way, but it'll get into the seats deep in left and foul. Action in the Mets' bullpen now. It's both a lefty and a right hander that start to throw. Grounded up the first baseline. Oh, what a stop on the slide. He's out. And what a vital play there, preventing the leadoff man from getting aboard. Dustin Darno. Digging in now, Dustin Garno. Couple of singles to his credit thus far. One out, nobody on. Rip down the first base line. And a backhanded reach at first, but he can't flag it down. Well, man, another base hit, but you know it was impressive. The right fielder well, cut that ball off. Eight. He got over there Arnold. quick, got the ball back in, and kept the double play in order. Into the box now, Gerardo Parra, as it's on the ground toward the hole. That's through, and he's got his first base hit. He's one for three. And with that, the go-ahead runs up to second now with only one away. Well, the good ones have that bat control. You see right there, he had a hole on the right side. First base was holding. Second base was playing double play depth. He shot it right through there on the right side for the hit. Nice job. Jordan Patterson will come on to pinch hit here in a big spot. Jordan. First and second now, one man out. And he takes a look at strike three called, and that's as important as they come there. Two big outs now. That was a big strike out there, guys. The best pitchers have the ability to strike guys out when they really need to, and that second out was really important at this point of the game. Could be something we look back on later when the game's over. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMayhew. Not much in the way of productivity from him so far, but he's got a chance to come through here in a crucial spot. Yeah, it's time now that he has to put the rest of those bats behind it because none of that matters if he can clutch up when it really counts. Well, now here comes the Mets manager, Terry Collins, on his way to the mound. And it looks as though that's going to be all Your for his starter here tonight. A.J. Ramos will come on to make his 40th appearance this season. Two men are on with two men out. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. Well, I know the last thing he wants to do is load the bases right here, so the pressure is on right now to get back to the strike zone. Shot weakly to the left. And try as he might, but he can't escape the tag there, and the inning is over. Mets bullpen able to stem the tide. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now, all tied at one and one. Mike Dunn has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Mike Dunn. Here's Jay Bruce now. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ballgame. And the pitch on two and one. Hit hard on the ground at first. And he'll step on first for the out. Three unassisted. The humidor Second certainly baseline. doing its job Deal so far. Walker. As you get a look at our line score for this one, a low scoring affair, very unlike the first 10 years or so of baseball here in Denver. Digging in the switch hitter, Neil Walker. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. And now pitch on the way. 
Looked like he was on that one, but it's one and two. Boy, that pitch looks so good when you're hitting, but you're not going to catch up to it. I think pitchers should use that more often. Nope. The high fastball in the eyes, they will never catch up to it. Bases are empty, one man out. Ball three. Three and two now. After two breaking pitches, there's a pretty good chance right now you're probably going to get something right in the middle of the strike zone to swing it. So if you're looking for it, go ahead and turn that baby loose. Throw gets him two down. The third baseman, number five, David Wright. Stepping into the box, David Wright. In his career against this pitcher, not great. He's one for eight. Two out, nobody on. Now here's the drive out to right center field. Wright will take the turn and head for second. And your go ahead run is in there at second base as he's got himself a two out double. You throw a ball down the middle you better start throw ducking right when you release it. He took it right back Rabbit. at him. Hit it Darn where it's thrown. Go ahead runs in scoring position here with two down. Stepping in now, Travis Darno. This is foul right side. Another try at 2 2. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Waiting on it is Dahl. And that ends the inning. No runs on a hit here, no errors, one man left on. Home half of the eighth, straight ahead, all tied at one and one. Into the box now, David Dahl. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. And he takes a good swing at that one as this is sent down the line in right, but ultimately into the crowd of foul ball. Ready to deliver the one and two. To two balls and two strikes now. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at bat here. He's set. Here's the two two. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first out. Boy, that's really disappointing for a guy that has wheels, right? All he wants to do is get on base and take advantage of the strength of his game, which is his speed. But with the strikeout right there, you can't get on first base if you strike out. Here's Nolan Arenado, head to head against A.J. Ramos. Not great, and he's one for eight. Hits are even at seven apiece. And he lays off, ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving one up where he can really hurt you. Now time is called, and we'll have a pinch runner at first, and that'll be a wise decision as he's the potential go-ahead run. And that brings in the power-hitting shortstop Trevor Story. He was a ground-out victim last time up. One and two now as that's in there at the knees. Possible go ahead runs on first, one away. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time, out number two. In a double play situation, you kind of expect most pitches to be down in the zone, hoping for a ground ball. So that was an interesting pitch selection to go up in the zone. I think he caught him off guard a little bit. Into the box, Ian Desmond. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. One left for Colorado. Still tied, one apiece. Welcome back to the ninth inning from Coors Field in Denver as we get a nice shot of the city here tonight. Pat Valaika is going to go ahead and stay in the ballgame and play third now. Now playing third base. 
Chad Cruz will be on the mound to start the ninth inning, and his job will be keeping the ball game tied until the bottom half. Chad Jose Reyes is going to come on and pinch hit here, and this is an important at bat, leading things off in the ninth in a tie ball game. Good comeback there. It's three and one. Reyes awaiting the three one. Grounded softly to the right. And he barely gets to the bag in time and a close play for out number one. Fielder number three. Digging in. Curtis Granderson comes in one for two with that home run he hit earlier. High in the air out to center field. Para is in pursuit. Can't make the play, however. It's over his head. Granderson around second, headed for third. And he will make it in safely. It's a triple, and the go-ahead run is at third with only one away. Of course they feel good about the triple, but I know how managers think, and he's in the dugout wishing that triple would have come when some guys were on base. They've left a lot of guys out there in this one. We'll see if his teammate can bring him home. In now as Drubal Cabrera. Now he gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. This is where you got to pitch to the strikeout. Infield's drawn in. You don't want contact. You want to make him swing and miss. Throw the nastiest stuff you have inside with the slider, and that'll back him up a bit. Well, this is one of those situations. You don't want him to put a ball in the air. You got to pitch to the strikeout right here and get you out of this inning. Don't let him put the ball in play. And a slider just about gets away from him there as it runs in a bit too close for comfort. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. Catch made in center. Here comes the runner from third. But it is not in time as they take the lead here in the late going. Hey, putting together a good at bats late in the games can really help out. And how about this sack fly right here? Good at bat that leads to his team getting the lead here in the late innings. Now to the plate, Michael Conforto. Bases empty and two gone following the sacrifice fly. The 1 1 pitch. Chop fouled over towards the coaching box. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the 1 2. And this is fouled at the plate. Here's the one and two delivery. Weak roller right side. And the throw to first is in time, but the damage has been done as the side is retired. So one run here, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Sixth, seventh, and eighth place hitters scheduled to start the bottom of inning number nine. It's the Mets two and the Rockies one. Jerry Spamilia, if the now man called the on to close Mets. this one and earn number a save in the ninth. Jagaris Familia. Here's cargo Carlos Gonzalez. He'll lead it off against Jerry's Familia, who'll try to close the door in this one. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Now a swing and a ball chopped foul right at home plate. Ready to deliver the 1 and 2. Swing and a high pop up back onto the outfield grass now. Cabrera is there and that is a big first out here to start inning number nine. So the leadoff man gone to start the top of the ninth as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you can see right there he's up near the top in the National League currently third best. So digging in now Dustin Garneau he's working on a three hit ball game right now. 
one and two now. Here's the one and two delivery. And that is swung on and missed. And things are starting to look bleak here for the home nine. There are two away now. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. Standing in now, Gerardo Parra. Now a hard liner towards short. And he'll put this one away. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, that's just a great job of battling on the road. They fought all the way to the end, took the lead in the top of the ninth, and secured the W in the bottom half. That's a great team win. Close one tonight, 2-1 to one the final score. A.J. Ramos claims the win out of the pen, his first. Jerry Spamilia closes the door for the save, his 31st of the campaign. So that just about does it for Harold Reynolds, Dan Pleszak, and our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way on over to theshownation.com. Final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious New York Mets. Two runs on eight hits. No errors. They left 10. Here's the 0-1. This is going to be a tough play. Bryant, the Cubs win the World Series. Bryant makes the play. It's over. And the Cubs have finally won it all. 8-7 and 10. Breaking ball, Yelich, center field deep. Back goes Dyson at the wall.